Hello everybody, it's Zach here from realestatelicensewizard.com. Today we have a special video planned. We are doing 50 real estate exam true or false questions. You guys asked and here we are delivering. Now a couple things I want to go through before we get started. One, it's worth mentioning for those of you who don't know, true or false questions don't actually show up on state specific real estate exams, but practicing true or false questions is a fantastic way to prepare you for the actual exam itself. Plus on some pre-licensed exams, true or false questions do show up. So generally speaking, doing these is just another way to study and prepare yourself for the future. Now, two, these topics will be featured on the national portion of the real estate exam. So yes, this video is good in all 50 states. Three, you can follow along in many different ways. I recommend grabbing a paper and pencil and jotting down things as you go, or feel free to just listen to me all the way through. Now, four, all this information is located on our website, realestatelicensewizard.com. If you want to study at your own pace, go through our prep course, all that good stuff, link down below. And then five, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more real estate exam related stuff. That way you can pass the exam, no problem. All right, guys, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so let's get started. So the first true or false question is going to be this. True or false, a truster is the one who transfers a property upon the trustee. So is it true or false? I'm gonna give you guys a few moments to think it over and come up with your answer. All right, so was that true or was it false? Well, the answer for that one is going to be true. That is true. The first party, the truster or settler, transfers a property upon the second party for the benefit of the third party, the beneficiary. So that statement, a truster is the one who transfers a property upon the trustee, is true. All right, next one. A trustor must be a financial institution, such as a bank, per federal law. Is that true or is that false? So I'll give you guys some time for that one. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys came up with your answer. Was that true or was that false? Let's take a look. So that's what it's going to be is false. It is false. A trust store can be an individual or an organization. That statement is not true. It does not have to be a financial institution. Alrighty, next one. True or false, real property is all things removable like clothes, lawnmowers, couches, TVs, and furniture. Is that true or is that false? Here's some time for you guys to figure that out. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys came with your answer. What is the answer for this one? Well, it's going to be false. A real property is all things attached to the land and the legal rights to it. Real property is usually things that are immovable, such as a home itself or the buildings within the property line. There are some exceptions of the items that can be moved that are still real property, uh, like for businesses, but what it listed was personal property, not real property, personal property. So that is why the statement was false. Alrighty, next one, true or false. The terms realtor and real estate agent, although commonly used interchangeably are two different titles. So is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so hopefully you guys came up with your answer. What is the answer to this one? Well, it's going to be true. That is true. The terms realtor and real estate agent, although they're used pretty much interchangeably everywhere, they're actually two different titles and they are two different things. Just because someone is a real estate agent does not mean they are a realtor. Although normally it is the case, but again, it not necessarily means that exactly. And the important thing to know is the difference between the two, because when you're going on the exam, they do try and flip you up and mix you up when they bring up things like that. Um, but yeah, so make sure you understand that there are two different terms. And even though they're used interchangeably, they're actually two different titles and they mean two different things. All right, next one. True or false, demand refers to how much of a product or service is wanted by buyers. Supply represents how much the market can offer. So is that true or is that false? 
going to give you guys some time to think that one over. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys came up with your answer. Was this one true or was this one false? Well, this one's going to be true. True, demand refers to how much a product or service is wanted by buyers and supply represents how much the market can offer. It's important to remember that supply and demand functions like a scale. Alrighty, next one, true or false. The 28 by 36 rule states a household should spend a maximum of 28% on total debt services and no more than 36% of its gross monthly income on total housing expenses. Is that true or false? So I'll have a couple seconds to think this one over and read carefully. All right, so is that true or is that false? Let's take a look. All right, so that one's gonna be false. That's right, the numbers are flipped. I'll go back so you can see which numbers are specifically flipped. So take a look at this. It says a maximum of 28% on total debt services. Well, that's actually wrong. 28% of it, it's the gross monthly income of total housing expenses and no more than 36% on total debt service. So those two numbers were actually flipped, making the statement false. If it would have been flip-flopped, it would have been true, but again, uh, it wasn't the case. So that one is false. All right, next one, true or false, equity is the difference between the market value of your home and the amount you owe the lender who holds the mortgage. So is that true or is that false? All right, so the answer for that one is true. That is true. Generally speaking, equity is the difference between the market value of your home and the amount you owe the lender who holds the mortgage. Obviously, um, that's in terms of like real estate equity, equity and different things like businesses and things like that, that's gonna be different. But for our case and in real estate, that statement is true. All right, next one. True or false, water rights are divided into two categories, commercial and residential. So come up with your answer on that one. Alrighty, so what'd you guys come up with? Hopefully the right answer, the right answer is false. Do you guys know what water rights are divided into? So the two categories for water rights are riparian and littoral. Typically, um, riparian stands for something and littoral stands for something else, which actually I think we will cover that a little bit later, so I won't get into that quite yet. Um, but yeah, that statement is 100% false. The two categories are riparian and littoral, not commercial, or residential. All right, so next one, true or false, emblements are annual crops produced by cultivation legally belonging to the tenant with the implied right for its harvest and they are treated as the tenant's property. So is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so that one's going to be true. That is true. Emblems are annual crops produced by cultivation legally belonging to the tenant with the implied right for its harvest. And they are treated as the tenant's property. So that is a true statement. That is true. And pretty much that was the definition is uh, what they were giving you there. All right, next one, true or false. Surface rights are the rights to use the surface of the earth. Subsurface rights are the rights to the natural resources lying below the Earth's surface. So is that true or is that false? Here's some time for you guys to figure it out.
All right, so did you guys come up with your answer? Hopefully. So is this one true or this one false? This one is going to be true, that's right. Surface rights are the rights to use the surface of the earth. It's pretty self-explanatory there. It's almost in the definition, basically. Uh, and of course, subsurface rights are the rights to the natural resources lying below the earth's surface. So that statement is true. Alrighty, next one, true or false, an owner may transfer surface rights without transferring the subsurface rights or vice versa. So is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so what is the answer to that one? This one is going to be true. That is true. Surface rights are transferable without transferring subsurface rights and vice versa. For example, a landowner can sell his rights to an oil and gas company, uh, the subsurface rights that is, but he can still own the land on top of it itself, you know, or vice versa, again, depending on the circumstance. But they are both transferable without transferring the, you know, certain ownership of one of the rights. All right, next one, true or false? Encroachment is intrusion on a person's territory or property. Is that true or is that false? All righty, so... The answer for this one, what is it going to be? The answer is true. That's right, by definition, encroachment is intrusion on a person's territory or property. Similarly to the uh, penalty in football, encroachment. Uh, if you guys are football fans, it works very similar to how the penalty works. Encroachment is the intrusion on a person's territory or property. Alrighty, next one, true or false? Joint tenancy is when a parcel of real estate is owned by two or more tenants. Upon the death of a tenant, that share is transferred to the estate or heir of the deceased tenant. Is that true or is that false? Have some time to think this one over. Alrighty, so the answer for that one is going to be false. That would be a tenancy in common. So let's take a look at that one more time. So uh, a tenancy in common is when a parcel of real estate is owned by two or more tenants and upon the death of the tenant and the share is transferred to the estate or the heir of the deceased tenant. So again, that would be a tenancy in common, not a joint tenancy, which would make it false. Alrighty. Next one, what is the next one, true or false? To create a joint tenancy, the co-owners must share five unities, time, title, transfer, interest, and possession. So go ahead and think about that one and come up with your answer. All right, the answer for this one is false, 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 false. To create a joint tenancy, the co-owners must share four unities, not five, and those four unities are time, title, interest, and possession. There is no such thing as transfer. That is not a unity. It is, again, just time, title, interest, and possession. So just four unities there, not five, making that statement false. All right, next one, a freehold estate is an estate in which you have exclusive right to enjoy the possession of a property for an undefined length of time. Is that true or is that false? Here's some time for you guys to figure it out. Alrighty, so what's the answer for that one? 
this one is going to be true. That's right, true. A freehold estate is an estate in which you have exclusive right to enjoy the possession of a property for an undefined length of time. Again, that's another one of those definitions that's pretty much verbatim. Uh, so again, that is a true statement. The answer is true. All right, next one, true or false. An estate in sufferance arises when the tenant holds over after the expiration of their term. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so the answer for this one is true. It is true. An estate in sufferance arises when the tenant or a tenant holds over the expiration of their term. Simple as that. All right, next one, true or false. A periodic tenancy and a state at will are the same thing. Is that true or is that false? So have some time, think that one over. All right, so what's the answer on that one? This one's going to be false, 100% false. An estate at will means that it can be ended at any time. A periodic tenancy is when a leasehold agreement, or I'm sorry, is a leasehold agreement that specifies an initial period of tenancy and the length of the agreement. So it does not end, again, at a specified period. You see, do you, do you, does that make sense? So there are two different things. Again, an estate of will means they could be ended at any time, while a periodic tenancy is one that has an initial period of tenancy and the length of the agreement, but it does not end after the specified period. So again, those are a little bit different, but I, again, when you're reading those definitions, you should understand periodic, estate of will, two different things there. Alrighty, next one, true or false. A percentage lease means a percentage of your mortgage is reinvested into a trust. This type of rental or mortgage is primarily used for residential property. So go ahead and think that one over. All right, do you guys have your answer on that one? So is it true or is it false? So for this one, the answer is going to be false. A percentage lease is a rental that is based on a percentage of monthly or annual gross sales made on its premise. So this definition right here, completely wrong. <laughs> it doesn't exist. That is completely wrong and this one is completely false. Uh, and again, a percentage lease is just a rental that's based on a percentage of the monthly or annual gross sales made on the property. Alrighty, so next one, true or false, there are no federal zoning laws. True or false, so have some time, think that one over. Alrighty. Is it true or is it false? This one's gonna be true, definitely. There are no federal zoning laws. Keyword there is federal. There's just state or county zoning laws. Again, there are no such thing as federal zoning laws. So that is a true statement. Alrighty, next one, true or false. An example of a special use property would be a police station. So go ahead and think that one over. All right, what is that one? Well, that's one, Ooh, oops, <laughs> misspoke there. That one is going to be true, true. It is a special use property. A special use property uh, would be properties that are there to benefit the public, such as schools, hospitals, and police, station, police stations, making that statement true. The answer is true. All right, next one, a buffer zone 
is a space of land between two use districts, such as a park, playground, or highway. Is that true or false? Go ahead and come with your answer on that one. Now, I believe there is a misprint right there. It should say a buffer zone is a space of land between two districts, not two use districts. Um, but that really doesn't matter too much. The answer still remains the same. The answer is going to be true. So by definition, a buffer zone is a space of land between two districts, such as a park, playground, or a highway. All right, next one, true or false. An individual seeking to be excused from the requirements of a zoning ordinance needs a variance. So is that true or is that false? Alrighty, what's the answer for this one? You guys know, hopefully. The answer is true. It is true. So why is this true? Well, again, it's one of those things. The statement is very similar to the definition, and the definition is pretty much given, making it true. So an individual seeking to be excused from the requirements of a zoning ordinance needs a variance, which pretty much sounds exactly which, what the information they gave us. So again, that statement is true. All right, next one, true or false, the primary public land use control is deed restrictions or restrictive covenants. Is that true or is that false? All righty, so what is that one? This one is going to be false, 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 false. The primary public land use control is zoning, not deed restrictions or restrictive covenants. Those are private land use controls, not public. So again, the primary public land use control is zoning, which is not what they told us in the statement, making it false. All right, next one. A contingent property means an offer for the property has been accepted, but there is a condition or contingency that is written into the contract and it must be met before the sale can go through. Is that true or is that false? All right, what's the answer for this one? It is true, a contingent property means an offer for the property has been accepted, but there is a condition or contingency that is written into the contract and it must be met before the sale can go through. Alrighty, next one, true or false, corporations may be formed for profit or non-profit purposes. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, no tricks here. The answer is true. Corporations can be formed or they may be formed for profit or non-profit purposes. Don't be confused there. Pretty straightforward. Alrighty, next one. DBA stands for Debt Business Association. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so what's the answer for this one? This one's false. So DBA does not stand for the Debt Business Association. What does it stand for? It stands for doing business as. So that one is false. Alrighty, next one, true or false? A sheet is when a property owner dies and leaves no proper documented inheritance plan, the property ownership then reverts to the government. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, that one's gonna be true. 
It is true. A sheet is when a property owner dies and leaves no proper documented inheritance plan. The property ownership reverts to the government. A sheet basically just ensures that property always has ownership. Pretty straightforward there. Alrighty, next one. True or false, an LLC is a hybrid legal entity that has certain characteristics of both a corporation and a partnership or sole proprietorship. So is that true or is that false? All right, the answer for that one is true. Of course it's true. An LLC is a hybrid entity or hybrid legal entity that has certain characteristics of both a corporation and a partnership or sole proprietorship. When you hear LLC, just hear hybrid legal entity. Just think of that because really it, that's what it is. By definition, it's a hybrid of kind of all those business types. And of course, why do we need to know those business types? Because we have to be familiar with how the ownership works in terms of is it individual ownership, uh, like in a sole proprietorship or partnership where the actual person owns the property, or when it is a legal entity like a corporation or LLC, again, they are protected because the business itself owns the property. So again, it's important to understand that distinction there. All right, next one, littoral rights pertain to landowners whose land border large rivers. Is that true or is that false? All right. Is this a true or false statement? Well, it is false. That's right. It's false. Littoral rights pertain to landowners whose land border large, navigable lakes and oceans. Riparian rights pertain to properties that adjoin a river or stream. So remember earlier we were talking a little bit about that and how water rights were divided into two sections. Those two sections are littoral and riparian. And guess what, guys? Here's a super easy trick if you're still struggling with this. The super easy way to remember the difference between littoral rights and riparian rights is littoral stands for lake. So think of lakes or, or you know, large navigable oceans, lakes. So la lakes, littoral lakes, and then riparian rights. Think of rivers or streams. So riparian rivers, riparian rivers, simple as that. That trick alone. <laughs> you should never get those ones confused. Again, littoral lake, riparian river. All right, next one. All right, true or false, the Superfund Amendments and Reauthoriz Reauthorization Act of 1986, excuse me there, <laughs> was passed when the original act, CERCLA, expired in 1985. Is that true or is that false? All right, so that's true. Pretty straightforward there. Um, the Superfund Amendments Reauthorization Act was passed when the original act, which was CERCLA, expired in 1985. So that statement itself is completely 100% true. All righty, next one. True or false, involuntary liens are created by the homeowner. Is that true or is that false? All right, so what's the answer for this one? Well, it is false. That's right, it's false. Involuntary liens aren't created by the homeowner. It is a claim imposed against a property without the consent of its owner. Involuntary liens are placed usually by the government or any government revenue authorities, for example, for like unpaid duties or taxes. So again, that statement is false. Involuntary liens are not created by the homeowner, but by somebody else. All right, next one, true or false. Functional obsolescence refers to the loss of property due to external factors, meaning things off the property affecting the property's value. True or false? All 
All right. Is that true or is that false? Well, this one is going to be definitely false. It is false. So why is this false? Well, economic obsolescence refers to the loss of property value due to external factors, meaning things off the property. Functional obsolescence refers to the loss of property value due to an obsolete design feature. So let's take a quick look at that one again. So it gave us functional obsolescence, but the definition correlates with economic obsolescence. So let me just repeat that one last time. Economic obsolescence refers to the loss of property value due to external factors, while functional obsolescence refers to the loss of property due to an obsolete design feature. See the difference there? Um, so again, they gave us the definition for one, but they gave us the term for another. Hopefully that made sense. So again, that one is false. All right, next one, true or false? A life estate is an interest in property or real property, which is held for a duration of a life of a designated person. It may be limited by the life of the person holding it or by the life of another person. This designated person is called a life tenant. Oh, mouthful there. Is that statement true or is that false? So think that one over here some time for you guys. All right, a little bit of a lengthy one there, but you know what? Everything that they said here is true. These are all true statements. So again, it was a long one, but they're all true. A life estate is an interest in real property, which is held by the duration of the life of a designated person. It may be limited by the life of a person holding it or by the life of another person. This designated person is called a life tenant. So again, that statement is completely true all the little parts about it, which makes it, of course, true. All right, next one, true or false. A parcel of real property that has an easement over another property is best described as a dominant estate or the dominant estate. So is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so what is the answer to that one? That one's gonna be true, definitely true there. By definition, a dominant estate is a parcel of real property that has an easement over another property or piece of property. And of course, the great way to remember that one is the dominant estate, it dominates the other piece of property. Um, and then the other one, obviously, well, I don't, I don't know if I should get into that because maybe we'll cover that later, but <laughs> the key way to remember that is the dominant estate dominates the other piece of property, which is why it has the easement. Um, so again, that's the kind of quick way to remember it. And if we do cover the other definition, you'll see why that makes sense. All right, next one, true or false? Generally speaking, when the supply of available houses in an area increases significantly, the average cost of housing goes up. Is that true or is that false? So have some time to think that one over. Alrighty. So is this a true or false statement? It is false. That's right, it's false. When the supply of available houses in an area increases significantly, the average cost of housing goes down. So what was the difference there? Down, not up. It does not go up, it goes down. So again, when we're talking about supply and demand, imagine you have a scale. If one side raises, the other one lowers and vice versa. So when the supply of available houses in an area increases, the cost goes down. And if the cost were to decrease, technically speaking, through the law of supply and demand, if the housing cost went down, the available houses would increase. Make sense? So again, it is like a scale. When one side goes, the other one follows with it, and they are opposite. So again, that is your basic supply and demand problem, which you'll definitely see on the exam. 
Alrighty, next one. True or false, the three main forms of depreciation are major obsolescence, minor obsolescence, and physical deterioration. So go ahead and think that one over and come up with your answer. All right, was that true or was that false? Well, this one is going to be most definitely false. So the three main forms of depreciation are, uh, hopefully you guys remember these because we actually covered two of these earlier. So uh, economic obsolescence is one, functional obsolescence is the other, and then last but not least, physical de deterioration. So they gave us phys physical deterioration. That was true. That's 100% true. But what isn't true <laughs> is the major obsolescence and minor obsolescence. Those things don't exist. If those would have said economic and functional, different story, that would have been true. But because it didn't say that, the statement's false. Simple as that. Alrighty, so that one was false. Let's check out the next one. So true or false. Reverse mortgages can provide much needed cash for college students whose net worth is mostly tied up in student loans. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so that one is false. Completely false, guys. Completely false. So what is a reverse mortgage, first of all? Well, reverse mortgages can provide much needed cash for seniors whose net worth is mostly tied up in the value of their home. So not college students and not uh, the student loan debt. It is for people dealing with uh, their value tied up in their home. And again, it's for seniors. So that statement is false. All right, next one, true or false? Eminent domain is a term used to describe the right of the government to take over privately owned real estate, usually despite the owner's wishes. So go ahead and think that one over. Go with your answer. Alrighty, that one is most definitely true. That one is true. It's simple as that. Think of eminent domain, um, you know, as that right, I mean, of the government to take over privately owned real estate despite the owner's wishes. Again, think of that, you know, like that poor old person or maybe a young person, doesn't really matter. Um, but they, you know, they've been living on property for a while and then the government comes in and they're like, hey, we need to expand this highway or, you know, whatever the case might be. The owner's upset. Think of that whole story. For me personally, that helps me really remind uh, or be familiar with, with, with this experience as well as this term and these laws and, you know, how to explain them. But basically, just remember that story. Think of somebody, uh, maybe you know somebody personally, maybe you don't, or maybe you've heard, you know, on the news about someone who's lived somewhere so long and, you know, they're very upset because maybe, you know, the government came in, they were like, hey, we need to take this land for something. Um, again, that is eminent domain. Um, so just remember that. All right, true or false, water rights are pertinent. So is that statement true or is that false? Alrighty, that one is definitely true. Water rights are a pertinent, meaning what? Do you guys know? Hopefully. So that means they run with the land and not with the original owner. In other words, if an oceanfront property is sold, the new owner gains the littoral rights and the seller relinquishes his or her rights. So again, that is most definitely true. Water rights are a pertinent. Alrighty, true or false. Let's take a look at this next one. Price fixing and dividing territories are examples of antitrust law violations. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so that is definitely true. Those are both fantastic examples of antitrust violations, which means you definitely don't want to do them and you definitely don't want to uh, 
you know, even be remotely close to doing something like that because you could end up in jail, fined, lose your license, all that good stuff. So yes, price fixing, dividing territories, all that stuff, those are examples of antitrust law violations. So that statement is true. All right, next one, true or false, the income approach is primarily used for rental properties as not all properties generate income. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so what's the answer on this one? It's true. That's right, it's true. So the income approach is generally used for rental properties as not all properties generate income. And that should make sense, right? Um, obviously, well, I mean, depending on the circumstance, but in most cases, a home isn't generating income. It might be, you know, gaining value, but it's not generating income. When you think of income approach, you need to think of rental property or some sort of property that is generating income. Make sense? Hopefully. Alrighty, next one, true or false, escrow is the right held by one person to use the land of another for a specific purpose, such as driving through someone else's property. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, that is most definitely false. An easement is a right held by one person to use the land of another for a specific purpose. Not escrow, an easement, in easement. So the definition they gave us is for an easement, not escrow. So that statement is definitely false. And for bonus points, <laughs> the definition for escrow is basically, it's just a way to transfer money or property um, from one party to another through the use of a neutral third party agent. So again, that totally doesn't line up with what they gave us, making that statement 100% false. Alrighty, next one, true or false, a clause identifies a particular section of a real estate contract. Is that true or is it false? Alrighty, so this statement is definitely true. That's right. A clause identifies a particular section of a real estate contract. And if you guys are not familiar with clauses, uh, check out our clause videos. We have a bunch of them and they are super important to understand because obviously you need to distinguish which clause is which. And again, a clause just identifies a particular section of a real estate contract. And I believe our next couple of questions are going to have to do with clauses. So Stay tuned and buckle up for these. Yep. <laughs> All right. So next question or next true or false question. True or false. The habendum clause is the statement in a contract that describes the rights and interests being given. It almost always begins with the words to have and to hold. Is that true or is that false? So here's some time to read that over, think it over and come with your answer. Alrighty, so is this true or is this false? Well, this one is definitely going to be true. The Habendum Clause is the statement in a contract that describes the rights and interests being given. If you see the words to have and to hold, think of the Habendum Clause. Those two things go together. Again, the Habendum Clause is the statement in a contract that describes the rights and the interests being given. Alrighty, next one, true or false. The Subordination Clause is a provision in a mortgage or deed of trust signed with the lender that states that the borrower must pay the mortgage in full before the borrower can transfer the property. So is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so for this one, you got to be familiar with the subordination clause and what that means. And if you don't know what that means, then you're not going to get this one right. It's as simple as that. So is this true or is this false? This one is going to be false. 
So what did they give us? They gave us the alienation clause, not the subordination clause, the alienation clause. So the alienation clause is a provision in a mortgage or deed of trust signed with the lender that states the borrower must pay the mortgage in full before the borrower can transfer the property. So again, they gave us the wrong definition uh, for the wrong term or vice versa. They gave us the wrong term for the wrong definition or you know what I mean. So that one again is false. So Next one, true or false, the acceleration clause is a required contract provision that ensures the title of property is transferred to the buyer once the mortgage is fully paid off. So it's a little bit similar to the last one. So is this one true or is this one false? Think about it, come up with your answer. Alrighty, so what is the answer for this one? Well, it's gonna be false. So just like before, they give us the wrong definition for the wrong term. So for all these contract clauses, you have to be able to distinguish which is which. So what did they give us here? Well, they gave us the defeasance clause. So the defeasance clause is a required contract provision that ensures that the title for the property is transferred to the buyer once the mortgage is fully paid off. Again, they gave us the defeasance clause, but, or I'm sorry, they, they gave us, or they told us it was the acceleration clause, when in reality, the definition correlates with the defeasance clause. Understand? Yeah, so that statement is false. All right, next one, true or false, title and deeds are the same things. Is that true or is that false? All right, so this is gonna be a simple false with a special explanation here. <laughs> so some people, maybe it was you or maybe somebody you know, thought that this was true, um, that title and deeds are the same things or title and deed or having a deed are the same thing. So that is false. Having title is not a physical thing. It's not like a deed where there's an actual paper in a courthouse that says that says you own the property. No, title is merely a legal concept of ownership. Deeds on one hand are actually the legal documents that transfer title. It's super important to understand that distinction. People mix this up all the time and the exam will get you on this one. So while well, having title is the concept of owning the rights towards an asset or in our case property, Deed, on the other hand, obviously is the legal document that uh, transfers the title itself. So understand that these are two different things and that you know you need to understand the distinction. And we actually do have a full video on that if you're interested as well. Um, but yeah, so again, title and deeds are not the same thing. They're similar, they're very similar uh, in real estate, but again, they're not the same. All right, next one, equitable title is the interest held by one party to purchase property before closing. Is that true or is that false? Here's some time to think that one over. Alrighty, so is this statement true or false? Well, it's gonna be true. Equitable title is the interest held by one party to purchase property before closing. In between closing and the execution of a sales contract, the buyer has something called equitable title. That's what this is, meaning they have the right to purchase the property before closing. Alrighty, next one, true or false, a general warranty deed offers the grantee the most protection. Is that true or is that false? Alrighty, so this one is going to be true. A general warranty deed offers the grantee the most protection. You need to remember that, most protection. Now, with this type of deed, the grantor makes a series of legally binding promises called covenants and warranties to the grantee, agreeing to protect the grantee against any 
prior claims and demands of all persons whomsoever in regards to the conveyed land. So again, the statement they gave us, general warranty deed offers the most protection. That is 100% true. It is true. Alrighty, true or false, in all states, the sellers must disclose whether someone has died on property within the last eight years. Is that statement true or is that statement false? Alrighty, so this one is going to be false. Really? False? Yes, false. Why? Because it varies per state. In some states, uh, you have to disclose whether or not someone died on a property within the last eight years. In others, you do not. Um, but that's a super important distinction, which leads me, I guess, to a pretty good ending. Um, but you have to be familiar with your state laws. It's as simple as that. Uh, if you're not familiar, then you need to look into state-specific coursework or state specific study guides so that you understand these laws uh, and all that good stuff. And that is going to be it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you really enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, this is Zach from realestatelicensewizard.com. Make today magical. I'll see you guys next time.